<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Just by moving my stomach muscles, I can make this cat do Your funny things. Your stomach is a lot of things, Bly, but it ain't cute. <laughs> <laughs> and there are very few muscles down there. <laughs> it's flat. Yeah, it's they all went to, to pot, as it were. <laughs> Let's make for yourself. Well, I'm Laban Johnson, and this is, um, <laughs> what's your name? Hi, I'm Larry Bly, and welcome to Cooking Cheap. Good to see you, everybody. Well, we're here today to whip up the dishes the cook sister <laughs> sent us last week mm -hmm. and I have a perfectly delicious little salad and Larry tell them about your dish. I have mm. a perfectly overblown production called Gar Garney Stew which I tried yesterday evening in my home for the first time we had to call out hose company number four to clean my <laughs> kitchen between the flour <clears throat> and the grease and the tomato juice all over the place this is undoubtedly a corker of a recipe. Well, now, what tip could you offer everyone at home uh, in order to avoid these pitfalls? Oh, I will give you the first tip when we walk onto the set. I will right off the bat tell you what my first big mistake was, and we'll go from there. Well, if it's that bad, let's go do it. Oh, okay. And, and so we will go do it. Laban has a recipe that takes a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah. And what? that's how, how did that happen? A little bit. How did that happen? Yeah. I haven't the vaguest that I, idea. That I would have gotten such a... I just don't know, Laban. Oh, okay. Coolgardie stew. Coolgardie stew. This stuff goes on for weeks, so I may as well get started. You gotta kinda do it in steps. The first thing I would suggest you do is get a little grease going in a pan. Oh, and grease. Get, you, get your grease going. Well, a little oil. Oh, that sounds so Call much it whatever better. you want to, it's grease. If you get this stuff on your pants, it's grease. I don't care what you call it. What you call it. I was wondering where we were. I lost my, tell lost my tally light there for a minute. Anyway, uh, most people don't have tally lights in their kitchen. Have you ever noticed oh, that? Oh, I do. Oh, do you really? Uh-huh. So he'll always know which way to look and yes. smile. Uh -huh. But the first thing I'd suggest you is get a nice big pan and put about a quarter of an inch of uh, oil in it and start heating it because now we're going to do another step to the Coolgardi stew. And what we're going to do, I've already done a little of it because this goes on so long, is you take an onion, an ordinary onion, and chop it very fine. And let's put that, excuse me, this recipe just takes so much. I wonder if that was the real one or if that was the, I just, excuse me, I just lost an egg somewhere <laughs> out here. Well, the back. it has, right where? It's under the corner. corner. It's under the corner. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. Yeah, right back. Did you mean to do that, Bly? What? I said, did you mean to do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got it. Thank heavens, the one that rolled off was the... Uh, had the nasty The hard-boiled egg. <laughs> <laughs> it rolled off onto the floor. We're going to be using two hard-boiled eggs and one uh, raw egg. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to take your one whole onion that you've chopped up and put it into a little bowl. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make up a, a mix first. A mix. And into that we are going to put two hard-boiled eggs, and I hard-boiled these yesterday, and these are real hard-boiled. Boy, they were really tough when they hit the ground, I'll tell the, you Did that. you see that thing? It bounced uh -huh. about three times. Put that girl's eye out behind the camera. Out of your eyes. Of course, she too. couldn't see too well before it. Never mind. But anyway, let me wash that because it has, after all, been on the floor. Okay, and here's another one. <laughs> What's it? Am I missing something? Is there another program going yes. <laughs> on on the set while I'm doing? Yeah, there's a funny one on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll swear. <laughs> this is the last one of these programs I'm doing. I'm announcing uh, the end of my tenure with the program. <laughs> well, there's a very unusual fungus this growing. Is my, under no, it's my leprechaun outfit for St. Patrick's Oh, Day. how clever! Look at Laban. Isn't he funny? Okay. <laughs> Two hard-boiled eggs. Put them in there, and it says chop them up. Don't worry about chopping. Uh, 
what I'd just do if I were you, in fact, I'm going to do it right now, is just take your little fork and just scrunch it all up. All right. Scrunch it one time, baby. Well, it's not scrunching so good. Maybe we should have chopped it. I believe this is a rubber egg. <laughs> well, how'd you do it at home yesterday? I did it exactly like I'm doing it right now. Oh. Did it work at home? Uh, yeah, but I believe this egg is set up during the day. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is one of those been laid twice. You probably could do that in a food processor. In, uh, oh, you in could do all flat. this in a food processor, nothing flat. I'm glad you mentioned that, Laban. You could also do this in a food processor, nothing flat. <laughs> <laughs> now, take that and mix it up. Put a little salt and pepper in now. Let me get some pepper. Just a little cayenne. Is that the way you say that, cayenne? Uh-huh. Little cayenne pepper. Rhymes with Cheyenne. Cheyenne. You remember her? She was uh -huh. so shy, she used to play the piano from the inside. Uh -huh. Down in Wyoming. A little regular pepper. Are you throwing stuff at me? No, no. And a little bit of salt. Put a little salt in there also. Assault your senses. Assault and, and battery. Then we take a, a, an ordinary raw egg, and we're going to put that in there. This thing has really uh, got a lot of egg in it, but this is just a little mix, all right? Now, did I mix any, miss anything on that? I don't know. Did Beat the eggs and onions together with, oh, flour, a little flour. You need a little flour to hold it together, all right? A little, little flour. Now, this is a mix that we're going to attempt to insert into some bacon, which we're going to insert into some beef, which we're going to insert into a pan and fry. I have not figured why we have this mix because you, this is the most difficult stuff to work with I've ever seen, but this is what the recipe calls for and I'm not here to argue about it. Now, what we start doing next is, is we take some we take some beef. This is a top round steak and I'm going to tell you ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this was my first mistake of the evening. If you're going to get top round, have it cut expressly for this recipe. It needs to be approximately twice as thick as what you see here. That is far too thin. And I'll tell you why. Because you're going to go through, I hope this knife is better than I think it's going to be, and it isn't. Hang on. No, I guess that one's Not a serrated one. Now what you want to start doing, you want to start trimming this very thinly. And it should be quite thin. It's supposed to be approximately five inches in length. The reason, this really should be much thicker than it is. And you'll find out why in a couple of minutes. First of all, it's, it's not nearly as thick as the bacon, which we're going to wrap in it. So you'll see where we get into problems on this in a minute. I'm going to take a whole thing and cut it up. Let me cut that glob of fat off of there. Ooh. Would any of you, you don't like? <laughs> oh, some of the camera people. I was going to say, usually camera <laughs> people just, just, just sort of hang it out there. They just come right out and grab it up. But anyway, in this case, they're being real nice. Actually, that could themselves. have been some of the engineers back there. I'm not sure. <laughs> One should not push one's luck too much on a day like today. All right. I know when to shut up. Unfortunately, sometimes. Johnson, okay. Now, I'm real sorry. This just takes a couple of minutes. Well, right? you're doing it so well. With extraordinary... I'm getting into a fatty area, which I need to cut out here. And this is not the sharpest knife in the world. All right, when you get to the little flat globby areas, you got to cut the fat out because you don't want that. Nothing ruder than feeding a friend a glob of fat. And take that and throw that away. And get as many of these as you can out of this steak. I think we can get one more before we get to the fun part 
of the program. By the way, you'll all be happy to know I have a fake one in the oven. And it came out real nice because I tried it yesterday evening. Okay, there we go. Now, what we're going to do is take some of this fine bacon we have here. And we're going to take about a half a pack of it. All right? And you've got to cut those into three inch lengths. Let me put this Valley Dale pack down there. And we're going to uh, cut these into three inch, inch lengths, which the simplest thing to do is to take it like that and cut it in half. And that's approximately what you need. Now comes the fun part. Let me get a little more flour. Here's the flour. All right. This is going to be the fun part. By this time, hopefully your oil is getting very hot because you're going to have to like instantly fry these things. And here's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and this is where the misery comes in, boys and girls. Uh, I said some things in my kitchen yesterday evening that a person should not even say <laughs> to a bum. <laughs> Now you take a little bit of this and you just kind of spread this little mix over your little greasy little fingers and, and you start rolling this. Am I in the way? Start mm. rolling that. Now the reason this should be twice as wide as it is is because you see when you start to roll that into that, this is much wider than that is. So I, I, I got an interesting thing going yesterday. What I would suggest you do when you're as dumb as I am is that you start rolling it in the opposite direction. Do you see that? Like so. Then you take a toothpick and you insert it in there <laughs> so that it all stays together. Now this recipe doesn't say a thing about taking the toothpick out, but I just know that somewhere you do. Otherwise, your friends would choke and die while they're eating this recipe. Now, that is a very nice little, what would you call that? Uh, a turban. And you throw it in there to deep fry it. And then you start the whole process all over again. <laughs> a combination. <laughs> This is the biggest mess I have ever seen in my life. And you roll that up. It's just amazing. This is going much better than it went yesterday evening. And you will get it all over you. And again, round and round and round. And then take it and insert a toothpick into it so that it holds together real well. See what I say? Huh? Take that, roll it in a little of the flour, put that in there and hope you never have to see it again, and start all over again. Now you repeat this process until you are a complete gummy gooey mess. Now until you've used up all your beef. And if you use this, if you do this properly, It'll all come out just about right if you have a little bit larger piece of beef than I do here. This is just real gummy and gloppy, and there's nothing I can do about it. Getting the uh, toothpick in is, is the worst thing. But I'm coming along with it here today. And by the way, this really is worth the effort once you once you get it all put together. Fry that stuff very fast. And once you get it in there, it's very important that you salt and pepper it a little bit. You would be surprised what this little mix inside this bacon. Now, in a little bit, by the way, when we get this all fried up, we will put it into a, a baking dish and we're going to make up a, a nice, well, we're gonna put some uh, stock in there. <laughs> I keep forgetting what I'm doing. I, you put some stock in there and then we're going to cover it with whole tomatoes chopped up and just all kinds of goodness. It's just going to be so exciting. 
I'm going to keep doing this. Laban, maybe it would be nice if you said something during well, the program today. Well, I'm just trying today. to see uh, uh -huh. how well you're doing. I don't want to interfere with your uh, oh, no. running description Oh, no, we wouldn't want to do that. No, well, maybe indeed. I can show them how the salad goes while you're doing that. Yeah, why don't you do that, Laban? I have these two uh, <laughs> delightful-looking bowls with a shredded lettuce in it, and I'm peeling an orange using my little plastic orange peeler that I bought at the produce counter. Real neat little thing. And it's just a real slick way to peel these oranges. And once they're peeled, we're going to slice them because this is a sliced orange salad and I'm using a serrated knife. And, Sarah, who? Uh, if I had a smaller serrated knife, I would probably even go to the trouble of peeling these. These are navel oranges that are seedless. You could use any kind, but it's a lot of trouble if they're seeded. Have you ever heard of seeded oranges that are navelless? Mm, no, never have. I was just checking. And uh, now I'm going to put the sliced oranges uh, over here in on top of this lettuce. And we're going to garnish it with uh, some chopped celery and some other little goodies. This is just some regular Pascal celery, celery, celery. And you need, oh, a couple of tablespoons full for each salad you do. And uh, I think we got enough here. So I'll put a handful of celery over on this one and a handful over on this one. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'll wipe sure. off my hands a little bit here so I can go on to other things. Now, we're going to use some walnuts, and I'm going to take out some whole ones, and then I'm going to beat up the rest of them. Because they're supposed to be smaller. And... Well, they ought to be chopped. Oh, they didn't work. I guess I'll just have to break them up. They should be chopped. But I didn't bring the nut chopper. Boy, Larry, those things look delicious. Yeah, I want everybody to see these. Now, when these are fried like they're supposed to, they will, they will be nice little balls of meat, which you have a nice little, you see the bacon is in there, and the beef is on the outside, and you've got the filling inside. And they should hold together pretty well. It's a good idea to fry them as quickly as you can so that they will stay together very nicely after you finish with that. I'll let them fry on both sides. Ooh, doesn't that look pretty? It's lovely. I didn't realize how beautiful it was till I saw it on television. Uh -huh. it's gorgeous. I didn't believe it till I saw it on TV. You know, I don't believe half of what I see in person, but I know. everything I see on television, I believe. Oh, well, good. So anyway, let's show them uh, what the recipes are while we're waiting for this to do it. The Coolgardie Stew, one and a half pounds of top round steak and get it real thick, okay? You may want to do it uh, about two inches thick. Two hard boiled eggs, an onion, tablespoon of flour, salt, cayenne pepper, an egg, half a pound of bacon. You cut that up a little bit. And then your flour, your tomatoes, your juice of one lemon and stock of water, which we're gonna use in a couple of minutes when we put this in to the, to the pan to bake. And there you have it. Now that's just the first part of it. We'll, we'll finish it off in a couple of minutes, all right? Okay, now for uh, the salad, the recipe for the salad, you need lettuce, a couple of oranges, some chopped celery, uh, and uh, walnuts, uh, two tablespoons of those, and some whole walnuts, and some celery curls and oil no. and vinegar dressing, and you put them together like we've done, and you'll see all of that in just a minute. And it's lovely. So, uh, my salads are just about finished, Dr. Bly. This stuff is terrible. This stuff was all over my kitchen yesterday. I'm gonna show you very quickly what you do with this now. Once you get all of these going, what you do is you take them and gently put them into a baking dish, or a pan, they need to be done just a little bit more than this, but if you look down on that, you'll see that that 
those are nice and brown and they're going to stay together and believe it or not even after they bake for two hours at 350 degrees they're still going to be nice big round pieces of meat with all that wonderful filling inside it and it really is good now what I do at this point is I let it just sit there for a couple of seconds and as soon as it cools a little bit then I will go through with the tongs and my fingers and pull those toothpicks out of there it's very important. Do they hold together while you're cooking? They will hold together. Or could you leave them in there? Well, you don't want to leave them in there. I don't think that's a good okay. idea. They will hold together. I tried this recipe yesterday evening, and I think it's very dangerous to leave the toothpicks in it myself. You have a tendency to forget them. And once you get one of these caught halfway across your gullet, it's too late. Oh, no. How terrible. It's Choke too, on a toothpick. Well, yeah. It's too late to turn back now. Yeah. I've got to get these toothpicks out of here. All right. There's one more left. This one did not fry nearly as much, and so I am therefore having difficulty well, getting it out. Here we go. You could leave it in so people would know that was okay, the one done. Okay, there we go. Done. Now what you do, now you would have this totally covered with these things, all right? You have a whole pile of them in there. The next thing you do is you take chopped tomatoes and put that in over top of them. I'm not going to use all this because this was made for a larger recipe and some broth or stock, uh, preferably beef. I have some canned, which I'm going to use today. <laughs> Pour that in there. You're just starting to cover this. And an entire lemon. <laughs> there it is. I didn't think I was gonna get anything there for a minute. One entire lemon the juice of an entire lemon poured in there and a little bit of salt and pepper. Put that in the oven, 350 degrees for two hours. It cooks on, you, you don't want to put a lid no. over it. Uh, and maybe just a little more salt and pepper at this point, if you like. And that's it. And you'll well, have cool sure gargas too. Oh. Oh. oh no, here she is, hi honey. Just as I got it under oh, control. No. Oh, a terrible thing has happened. Oh, no, what? <laughs> Look, she's lost her head over what was in this lid. <laughs> we have oh, had, dear. We the have. witch has been ruined. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, this, she's dusty, too. <laughs> <laughs> this part. Oh, Lord. Oh, it's another oh, one of the Cook Sisters. Dear funny. boys. Yes, boys. We have been in Tokyo this week. Oh, no. <clears throat> we were in jail for three days. <laughs> The Japanese do not have much of a sense of humor. Uh -huh. Toots and I did three choruses of your song that you taught us. I think I'm turning Japanese. <laughs> and they thought we were being smarty, elicky, and threw us in the Japanese jail uh. for three days. Uh. While we were in jail, we received these two recipes from a trustee. You might want to <laughs> try them on your show. And boy, they look wild. What are they? Do well, we know? Sukiyaki. Oh, <laughs> And yakitori. Yakitori. I think well, I've been there. Uh, we'll try that next week. I gotta get this stew out while you We're, fill time. Well, I, fill time? Hi, I'm Phil Time. How are you? Good to see you. You Good. know my uh, older sister, passing. No. Are, are we ready to go over here? Here we got forks. Just. Okay, move on. I'll just come on over on here. On and don't I'll get so nervous this. and I'll get all the rest of it and we'll put it oh, together. Oh, that looks awfully good. Well, I certainly hope so. I'll dress the salads while he's doing that. We've got a little oil. Just, just a spot of oil. Excuse me, I'm getting the knives and forks and, and uh, together. A little vinegar here. <sighs> This stew is delightful, by the way. A splash of vinegar. I'm not sure it's worth all the, for our protection. <laughs> Just like in the fancy restaurants. Oh, thank you. Here, have one. Mm-mm-mm, I can't wait to dig in. Well, of course you can. Well, you try the cool garni stew, and I'll try this little simple salad that you've done here. Mmm, very nice. The lettuce and the celery and the nuts. Very good, very good. Mm-hmm. That's a nice salad, I like that. Oh, this is delicious, Larry. 
in spite of the fact it was a misery to you. It was a misery, but it is well worth it. It really has a very nice, delicate flavor. Good combination of the beef and the bacon. And it cooks up very nicely over two hours and gets very, very tender. It's a good flavor. Mm. Of course, you burn your mouth real severely. Mm. Well, well, we gotta go. We gotta go. If you're a fan of Cookin' Cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at BlueRidgePBS.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.